Hello, my name is Stefan Ohr Hallinger and I will present the first part of our STAR 2D Points Curve Reconstruction Survey and Benchmark. You all know the game Connect the Dots and it's easy to guess what this is, Kiwi Bird, but what if the numbers are not there? Here's the solution. It's hard for us, even harder for the computer. What are challenges for curve reconstruction? We have non-uniform sampling, means the distance between samples is quite different. We may have sparse sampling, you can see here that points which are closer on opposing parts of the curve than on the curve itself. And sharp corners, you can see here, as well as points which are not lying on the curve but are perturbed by noise. Multiple curves, outliers, the blue points, or even curves which are not manifold, as you can see at the mouth of the fish here. There's a lot of different algorithms for 2D curve reconstruction. How can we make sure that we choose proper algorithm which suits our needs? What we need is a benchmark that evaluates all algorithms on different challenging curves and highlights the strengths and weaknesses of each of them but also gives quantitative analysis on reconstruction quality and the runtime, so we know what to expect. The outline of this star is, uh, first I tell you about related work, this define the scope of this star, what are the challenges for input and output uh, reconstruction, the taxonomy of the algorithms, then uh, some definitions, I'll talk about proximity graphs, first category would be graph-based, and feature size based reconstruction algorithms and then my co-authors will continue with uh, how to reconstruct noisy points, sharp features, traveling salesman problem, how is it related to curve reconstruction, self-intersecting curves, human visual system based algorithms and implicit curves. Then uh, we'll mention the benchmark, how is it uh, built and evalu evaluation and the results. Finally, we sum it up and give a conclusion of future work. So, what is there on prior work? There is a paper containing some experiments on curve reconstruction. Then there is the book by Day, given an excellent uh, overview until 2006. And just one uh, more recent paper, but with very few curve and surface reconstruction algorithms. So there was a dire need for a star. We evaluate the 36 curve reconstructions and categorize them. One way to reconstruct a curve you can see as you either go to the boundary samples or you take a contour of area samples, what we leave out here. And the other classification, you can uh, define implicit function, construct implicit curves. Uh, which is popular in 3D, or a polygonal curve, and we restrict the, the scope of the star to polygonal curves, as there is no source code for implicit algorithms in 2D. For categorizations, uh, we actually some algorithms, they might fit in several of the categories, so we put them where they fit best, but we'll also mention them in other categories. So first is graph-based. We take a, a graph, for example, the Lonic graph, filter some edges to reconstruct uh, the polygon. Or we uh, have algorithms based on feature size, so they can reconstruct different sizes of features. Some can fit noisy point sets. We construct sharp corners. There's the traveling salesman, which is closely related to curve reconstruction, as you will see, uh, non-manifold or self-intersecting curves, and finally, algorithms based on human visual system properties. Input data can have the following challenging properties, uh, non-uniform sampling, which determines, determines the size of the feature that we can reconstruct with these algorithms. Uh, sampling can be noisy, then we need to do some fitting because we don't want to interpolate the points and outliers uh, need filtering because they don't belong to the curve. 
For the reconstruction output, we also have some properties. If the degree of each vertex is 2, then it is a manifold curve. If it can be less than 2, then it can, the curve can be open. Curves can be multiply connected, can have sharp corners when the angle between the edges is smaller than 90 degrees. There are guarantees, for example, epsilon sampling, and also important is the time complexity, how long the algorithm needs to run. We have a table in our report that uh, looks at all these uh, nine properties of input and output data, and if you look for certain capabilities in order to choose an algorithm, for example here, we want an algorithm that can reconstruct noisy points, remove outliers, and also handle non-uniform sampling, then all these blue-colored algorithms will fulfill this criteria. If we choose different capabilities, for example, reconstruction must be manifold, it must handle sharp corners and run in n log n time, then these other blue algorithms will do the job. First, some definitions. A curve sigma is simple if it's a single connected component, closed if a degree of vertices everywhere is 2, and in the plane in two dimensions. A different uh, definition is uh, for smooth curve C, which can be a collection of, so it can be uh, multiply connected, must be twice differentiable in order to be smooth, and bounded means that it can be open in one manifold in the plane. And the sample set P is then a number of points which is sampled on either sigma or C. Some definitions related to sampling. Bloom defined the medial axis M for a curve C, which is a smooth curve here, as the closure of all points in the plane which have at least two closest points in the curve. You can see the medial axis here shaded red and some of its points have dotted circles. So you can see that there are at least two points with the closest distance in the curve. The local feature size was defined by Rupert. It's the distance from any point of the curve to its closest point in the medial axis, as you can see here with the red line for the large disk and which represents a large feature. And on the bottom you can see a small feature represented by a small disk. So this has a small local feature size. Epsilon sampling was defined by Amenta et al. as all points of a curve, the point P must be within a certain distance of a sample S. So here you can see that the distance between the point P and the sample S is about half of the local feature size at the point P. So this means if this is true for all the points on the curve, then the epsilon would be about 0 0.5. So this would be a 0 0.5 sampled curve. And they also define that the disk representing the local feature size must be empty, is empty of samples of the curve. We can also uh, make a different uh, sampling definition. As you can see here for the points P0 and P1, the local feature size differs quite a lot. As you can see with the red lines, the distances. So if you want to have uh, something that is constant over a curve interval, we can take one measure, which is here, the smallest local feature size along this interval for any point of the interval. And this is called the reach. As you can see here, the empty disks as the, for the reach are constant size between sample 0, uh, point of the curve, and sample 1. We see later this, that this is important for sampling uh, guarantees. Now I'll talk about proximity graphs for a point set P. Here you can see some graphs. They have a nice property that uh, each graph is a subset of the graph on the right. First, on the left, we have the minimum spanning tree, which is a cycle-free graph spanning the point set P with minimum edge weights. It's constructed such that uh, for any point, it's connected with the nearest edge to 
a point which is already in the graph until all points are connected. This detects the algorithm. Next is the relative neighborhood graph. It includes all edges for which, as you can see here, for the two points, uh, the circles with a radius of this edge. In the intersection of these circles, this lens is empty of points. So if it's empty of points, then this edge is included. Next is the Gabriel graph, which includes more edges. But this is the criterion that the empty ball included this empty disk at the edge, centered at the edge, does not include any points. And finally, for the Delaunay triangulation, uh, for any triangles in the graph, circles are empty of points. So now for the first category, algorithms are based on graphs. I will uh, explain each algorithm shortly. First is alpha shapes. You can imagine that the gray mass is ice cream and the gray, the yellow dots are chocolate chips and you have a spoon the size of these circles and you want to get as much ice cream as you can without uh, excavating any chocolate chips. And then the remaining edges between the points on the hull uh, form the alpha shape. This was uh, 1907. Uh, was an algorithm was defined to extract these manifolds and later this was uh, in 3D extended to the ball pivoting algorithm. Next is the beta skeleton. You can see that uh, lenses are formed between inter the intersection or the union of disks at the two red-shaded points, depending on if beta is smaller or larger than one. And if these are empty, then uh, empty points of the sample set, then the edges between the two red shaded points are part of the beta skeleton. How is this related to this angle theta between the points P and Q, which are shaded red, and the point R on the circle? You can see the relation between theta and beta. And interestingly, if beta is exactly 2, then this conforms to the relative neighborhood graph. Next is the gamma neighborhood. This is interesting because it unifies 12 graphs, including convex hull, the ones we talked before, and nearest neighbor graph, alpha shapes and beta skeletons, among others. Welcome defines uh, two parameters, uh, gamma 0 and gamma 1, with some relations, limits. And this graph contains edges with an empty neighborhood defined by some uh, correlations of disks using these uh, parameters. It can also reconstruct shapes which are not under the Delaunay graph. Next is sculpting, uh, defined by Poissonat, 1984. Here we have a point set, which is quite challenging. What it does, it takes the convex hull, and then here, triangles in the Delaunay triangulation of the point set, which have an edge in the convex hull, are uh, colored light yellow. And the uh, triangle, which has the largest edge, and overall the largest edge of the triangle is smallest, will be removed first. So this is the first step of sculpting. And based on this uh, hull, which remains, other triangles will be removed based on this criterion, largest, the smallest largest uh, edge of the triangle, until no more triangles can be removed without exposing points and disconnecting them. This uh, only works for simple shapes, so you can see the final boundary is not what we expect here. Other algorithms are based on the Euclidean minimum spanning tree. That's the minimum spanning tree in the plane. Here we have the same point set again, and the uh, minimum spanning tree looks like this. Uh, Figurator et al. just took the minimum spanning tree and showed that for very relaxed uh, sampling or simple shapes, they form an open graphic which can be closed by a single edge for the endpoints of this graph. Here again, it doesn't work. Or Hallinger and Mudur uh, in 2011 
showed an algorithm which exchanges edges which are not where vertices are not manifold until we get the manifold result. This works for this case, but unfortunately, since this algorithm is combinatorial, it uh, doesn't have a guaranteed runtime and can take very long. Uh, the same authors uh, described a new algorithm in 2013, which takes something similar to the minimum spanning tree, which requires at least one vertex, one uh, incident edge per vertex. They change this constraint to at least two incident edges per vertex. Since we have now per vertex at least two edges, it is a closed shape. Although, as you can see, some of the edges are thin, it looks like hollowed out, and deflated, and some points are inside the shape. So how can they get rid of these artifacts? They use an operation uh, at non manifold vertices, where it looks like deflated, like a deflated rubber boat, an, inflation, an operation they call inflate. What they do is they add triangles to non-manifold vertices based on largest, uh, the smallest largest edge on the triangle for any of such candidate triangle of the overall shape, such that the vertices become manifold. And they repeat this until they get a manifold hull, you can see here, with some vertices still interior to the shape. This may remind you of the sculpting operation of Poissonar explained in the previous slide, and actually this is the dual to sculpting. So now with the sculpting operation, since the approximate shape is already extracted, sculpting succeeds to extract the desired shape. Next is R regular shapes. Uh, these are shapes that have curvature at least R everywhere, so, but it requires uniform sampling of the boundary. What they do is they take edges as the boundary for which uh, the Delaunay triangles in the Delaunay triangulation, their circumcircles and tangent of the circumcircles uh, are smaller than ever angle smaller than the threshold depending on the sampling density and the curvature R. Uh, next is the shape hull graph. You can reconstruct curves with divergent concavity. What is that? On the left you can see two concavities on the top and their medial balls which are centered on the medial axis outside the shape and as they go towards the convex hull they become larger monotonously. Then they call this divergent. On the right, you can see a concavity which is not. The medial balls become large and then they become small again. What they do is they eliminate the lonely triangles from the, the lonely triangulation in the figure B, which have circumcenter outside the convex hull or the current boundary, and uh, regularize it such that the boundary remains manifold. They extend this in a later paper by taking the Warner poles uh, shaded blue in the figure on the left, the red uh, dots are the samples. Then they estimate normals and they orientate the Warner poles whether they are outside or inside, and the inside uh, poles become green. So we know that this is in the interior of the shape and then they connect it to edges. This guarantees an epsilon sampling as well as the convergence of bitangent neighborhood which is uh, similar to the divergent concavity but as you can see here it can also handle cases which are non-divergent and it computes the medial axis as well. Last uh, algorithm of the graph based category is called to neighbors they connect neighbors greedily and then a heuristic decides whether the curse is closed or open, as you can see in the last figure here. It's a parameter free algorithm. It can handle open and multiple curves, even holes, and the outliers to some extent. So, what's the conclusion on graph based algorithms? They often require a global parameter. 
Good results are mostly for uniformly sampling point density and the Tertiononic graph is not always guaranteed to contain the reconstruction and it's often slow or yields local minima, so we don't get the optimal result that we want. Next category is based on feature sizes. Uh, Amenta et al. published a similar paper in 98 which was the first to enable reconstruction based on the size of the features, so no more uniform sampling was required. Here, let's recall the definition of epsilon sampling. A point must be at a certain distance to any sample of a curve, and this is a factor of the local feature size, which is epsilon. Here you can see a epsilon sampling of about one, on the top, there's a large feature represented by this disk for the local feature size. You can see S1 and S2 are quite distant from each other. And on the bottom, we have a small feature, so the points must be sampled very closely. Quast extracts the Delaunay graph and then the Warner graph, and it gives a proof for epsilon sampling of about one quarter. This corresponds to an alpha that is quite large, the opening angle between the edges 151 degrees, but sometimes in practice it works better. An extension of crust is the anti-crust from gold. It extracts the crust in a single step from the Delaunay graph and also extracts the medial axis skeleton that you can see here shaded in red. Nearest neighbor crust uh, from Day and Kuma is a simple and elegant improvement. It connects uh, to its first to the nearest neighbor, and then it connects to the nearest neighbor of the remaining points, which have an uh, opening angle of more than 90 degrees, so it's not a sharp angle. So it cannot connect to the point on the bottom, because it would be a sharp angle. It gives a better limit, epsilon is smaller than one third, and a sharper angle as a result. Conservative crust, also by same author D is another extension. You can see comparison of results between crust, nearest neighbor crust, and conservative crust. It filters edges from the Gabriel graph, is robust to outliers, can reconstruct collections of open and closed curves, but requires a parameter and misses some sharp corners. Another algorithm is uh, published by Lenz. It starts with a seed edge and connects edges with a probe shape. Uh, which is empty of points, uh, defined by uh, an angle parameter. It permits self-intersections because it's a forwarding construction algorithm, advancing font algorithm. It claims a high epsilon, but doesn't give a proof for that. Yoshi adapts the traveling salesman problem that we will hear later more about to multiple connected curves. It transforms the non dnp hard problem into a maximum weight two-factor problem, which is solvable in polynomial time, and gives a proof also for epsilon smaller than one third, but restricted to a certain uniformity of the length between adjacent edges. Half nearest neighbor crust is in a simple variant of nearest neighbor crust, but reduces the angle from 90 degree to 60 degree between edges incident to a point, so it can reconstruct uh, sharp corners. You can see a point in its nearest neighbors ordered by distance. First it connects to the nearest neighbor in zero, and then constructs the half space, but not at the point as nearest neighbor crust, but at the center of the edge. And then it connects to the nearest neighbor inside the half space edge. So finds the closest point in the white area which is N3 here, and as you can see, it can construct angles up to 60 degrees, so sharp angles. To compare sampling conditions of the crust family, we can look at the number of points that a sample, that the curve needs to be sampled in order to be able to reconstruct it, first crust. As you can see, nearest neighbor crust already requires less samples, half nearest neighbor crust even less. Epsilon smaller than 0.47 is the best bound that's known to date. But we can even do better. 
we exchange the local feature size for the reach that we defined before over an interval of the curve such that the empty disk remain of constant size. The authors of H and Crust uh, defined also a equation where you can compute the factor rho for rho sampling from epsilon and for rho smaller than 0.9 you can see that H and Crust requires even less points. So to conclude, uh, feature size uh, based algorithms they give guarantees on sampling conditions, it's very good. They work very well for non-noisy point sets and you will hear more about noisy point set reconstruction, other challenging uh, aspects from micro authors. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jiju Pidambaran. As Stefan mentioned, I'm going to talk about human visual system based curve reconstruction implicit curve fitting and the curve reconstruction benchmark especially the various algorithms that we have included in the benchmark different data sets that we have experimented with and their sources ground truth representations and various sampling tools that we have provided in the benchmark evaluation criteria and uh, the test scripts for different experiments Okay, let me start with human visual system based curve reconstruction. In the curve reconstruction literature, there are a few algorithmic designs that incorporate gestalt loss of visual perception. So in particular, the principles such as proximity, that is the tendency of human visual system to group nearby points, the continuity principle, that the human eyes will follow a smooth path while connecting the points, and the closure principle, that is the tendency of human brain to perceive the objects as a whole. So the idea is to design functions that mimic human or human vision through uh, the gestalt uh, principles. So one of the earliest algorithm which proposed in this direction was uh, the distance-based curve reconstruction algorithm. So the DISCUR uses the proximity criteria uh, while connecting the points to a polygonal chain. It is given a polygonal chain TQ with an end vertex Q and a point P. Whether P should be connected to Q or not is decided through P's proximity relation to the polygonal chain TQ, which is captured through the function E uh, P comma TQ. And essentially, this function is formulated over the distance statistics of the polygonal uh, edges of, of TQ. So, uh, the DISCAR algorithm does not use any parameter. Uh, it handles open curves, closed curves, multiple curves, uh, and sharp corners, etc. But the sharp corners are handled properly only when there is a uh, dense sampling at uh, around the sharp corners as you can see here so to overcome the limitations of uh, discard algorithm the same group came up with a modified vision function that encodes proximity as well as continuity so discard when there are multiple candidates that exist at the same distance from the end vertex of a polygonal chain then the discard algorithm selected one candidate point arbitrarily so this is uh, this leads to ambiguous results and this is undesirable so to address this issue others defined uh, a connectivity area for the end vertex of a polygonal chain which essentially is a circular sector with the radius beta times the mean distance of the polygonal edge uh, the algorithm considered all the points that lie within the connectivity area and computed a connectivity score or connectivity value based on a function that is again formulated over the distance statistics and angle statistics. So distance statistics account for the proximity and the angle statistics uh, account for the continuity criteria along with um, a parameter, weighting parameter C. 
and the candidate point with the highest E value is connected to the polygonal chain. So the algorithm Weicker is sensitive to parameters. So there is a bunch of parameters that need to be tuned. So for example, C is a weighting parameter that balances the smoothness and nearness criteria. So as, as the value of C approaches to zero, uh, the smoothness criteria is given high priority and, and vice versa. And it is always it's a difficult task to come up with the right set of parameter values uh, that gives us the correct reconstruction. Uh, algorithms, uh, algorithms such as edge exchanging algorithm and connect 2D uh, employ proximity continuity as well as closure for curve reconstruction. So these algorithms are based on Euclidean minimal spanning tree. And this has been already discussed by Stefan, so I'm not going into the details of this algorithm. Moving on to the next topic, that is implicit curve splitting. So this is not a comprehensive review on implicit curves. So we want to show that uh, there exists another stream of techniques that can do curve uh, fitting. So only the well-known methods have been included uh, in, in, in the survey. So the implicit curve fitting is pretty popular in computer computer graphics. The problem is uh, given a set of points, uh, these techniques uh, attempts to define a smooth function f from r2 to r such that the zero level set of f approximates the underlying curve of the input points so once a function uh, is available then uh, the fun the curve can be visualized through a ray tracer or a marching squares algorithm so you can use marching squares algorithm to get a polygonal approximation uh, uh, to the function so uh, in many cases this uh, boils down to least square fitting problem so given a set of points uh, fit a non planar curves that is conic planar curves for example uh, fit an ellipse or fit a circle to a given set of points um, using such that you know it the the it minimizes the mean square distance from the samples to the curve. Uh, a few works focus on, uh, uh, you know, replacing the Euclidean distance uh, uh, by approximate uh, distances. So another uh, line of work uses sine distance uh, function uh, to approximate the implicit uh, function. So sine distance function for an arbitrary point P is is the sine distance between the point P and its nearest point on the boundary where the sine component indicates the location of P with respect to the curve. That is, if P, uh, whether, I mean, whether P is, uh, lies in the interior of the curve or lies in the exterior of the curve. So one example is tangent plane estimation method for 3D surface reconstruction. So uh, in this method, the others uh, uh, estimate the tangent plane to covariance analysis on k nearest neighbors for each for each uh, sample point and then uh, uh, plane orientation is estimated through a graph optimization problem which is uh, performed over a Riemannian graph uh, by taking each plane as as a node um, and uh, once the the oriented planes are available. The sine distance function is defined with respect to the nearest oriented plane. Then they use an, a contouring technique to, to extract the final uh, surface. So uh, the uh, implicit curve fitting can be broadly classified into local curve fitting and global curve fitting. So one of the well-known example of local curve fitting is moving least square fitting for function approximation. So under the context of 2D or 3D reconstruction, try to compute the MLS projection of a point Q. Uh, and uh, this is done using the following steps. So you def first define a hyperplane 
that approximates the point Q and its neighboring point. So we let's consider a set of neighboring points uh, of of the point under consideration, and uh, we define a hyperplane, and then um, construct a local frame where the origin of the frame is the point Q projected onto the hyperplane, and then compute the sine distance of all the points with respect to HQ. There is a height of heights of you know the neighboring points with respect to the hyperplane is computed. Uh, then a polynomial uh, G, a local polynomial uh, of some degree m is fit to the weighted points where the weight of the point is the distance uh, of the point from the origin. That is the point Q which is projected onto the hyperplane. And once the polynomial is uh, obtained, then the projection of Q onto G is it represents the momently square projection of Q. There are some works uh, along the theoretical line. That is, under the uniform sampling, uh, MLS surface is geometrically and topologically uh, correct approximation of the original surface. So this, uh, this is a result that is proved by Calori in 2008. And there are many variants of momently square algorithms, uh, including uh, a Euclidean minimal spanning tree based approach, surface resampling, progressive points at surfaces, algebraic surface spheres, uh, etc., um, which have been proposed. Um, and, and one of the main uh, uh, prop characteristic of moving least square fitting based algorithm is that uh, these techniques perform well uh, under the noisy data. So if the input points are noisy, then moving this square projection or MLS projection based technique does a reasonably good reconstruction. So, another uh, technique under local curve fitting is partitions of unity. So under partitions of unity, the input domain is divided into uh, subdomains uh, using uh, you know, an adaptive uh, uh, method and fit quadratic functions to the local regions. And then blend the locally fitted functions using weighing functions that sum up to unity of the entire domain. Under global curves fitting, a well known method is radial basis function, which basically formulates implicit function f as a linear sum of weighted and shifted radial functions. Um, you know, you can start with the f. As a sine distance function formulated our on curve or off curve points. So, off curve points are points projected along the normals of on curve points in both both the directions. So, essentially, you compute the normals for the points sets and uh, put, perturb the points along the normal directions uh, in, bo uh, in both the directions to the exterior and interior, and then compute the sine distance. Um, you know, keep that, uh, you know, the per perturbed distance as the sine distance. And then you start um, with this distance and uh, um, then it, it, it boils down to uh, a linear system and then uh, the least, least square fitting problem. So here the basis function could be any of these uh, following, could be a Gaussian function or multi quad quadric or polyharmonic and so on. So these are typical choices for the basis function. Uh, another uh, well-known method under global curve fitting is a Poisson curve reconstruction, where uh, uh, the algorithm solve for an indicator function for the curve whose gradient best approximates the normal field. And Poisson, this actually results in a Poisson equation, which can be solved using a locally supported RBF. Uh, in related works, they have tried using uh, Fourier basis and wavelet basis uh, to accelerate the Poisson equation uh, solving. In Voronoi tensors, where the Voronoi PCA approach is used to estimate the normal, then uh, implicit function is formulated as a generalized eigenvalue problem, which is then solved. Uh, such that its gradient most is most aligned with the points normal. So one of the difference between the Poisson curve reconstruction and Voronoi tensors is that 
um, in the Warnoi tensors method, uh, since uh, uh, the normals are estimated through a Warnoi PC approach, you may not get uh, consistently oriented normals. So let me compare uh, the explicit techniques with the implicit uh, algorithms for uh, in the context of curve reconstruction. So explicit curve reconstruction methods select edges subjected to certain geometric criteria. Whereas in the implicit methods, as we uh, saw in the previous uh, uh, slides, it approximates the curves through an implicit function. So it's a uh, interpolation versus approximation and approximation in most of the cases, implicit functions require the normal information, which is not required in most uh, 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 for the explicit reconstruction. And uh, majority of the ex explicit reconstruction methods interpolate the input data. Um, and, uh, and because of that reason, it fails uh, under noise or out outliers, so, so fails against noise or outliers, whereas um, the methods like moving least square uh, uh, algorithm, moving least square techniques are found to be robust uh, against noise. So there are some explicit uh, reconstruction techniques that uh, add extra post-processing step to get rid of the noise. Um, this is not an inherent nature of explicit reconstruction uh, techniques. Now, implicit functions are compact and which is pretty good for freeform, uh, you know, representing freeform curves and surfaces. Though it is very difficult to approximate, come up with uh, uh, with an approximation or define a function uh, for the freeform curves and surfaces, once the function is obtained, it's a uh, so it's a really compact and it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good representation. Now, implicit techniques uh, extends to 3D. Most of these techniques are discussed as a proof of concept um, while discussing the 3D surface reconstruction. Now, let me move on to the curve reconstruction benchmark. So, the benchmark uh, consists of algorithms, data sets, sampling tools functions to evaluate the reconstructed curves and test scripts for uh, various experiments. As you can see in the diagram, the benchmark takes different types of inputs. The input could be a point set or it could be a binary image or uh, an analytical uh, shape rep representation. If the input is a binary image uh, or a smooth curve representation of the shape, uh, then uh, these these inputs are subjected to sampling uh, before uh, you know these uh, the corresponding pointers are fit to the reconstruction algorithms the benchmark has a function to evaluate the reconstructed results so basically the reconstruction algorithms interact with the benchmark driver and once the results are generated the evaluation function will take the reconstructed result and compare uh, compare it against the ground truth uh, representation. And based on the comparison, it produces, it generates uh, graph plots for uh, root mean square error uh, or the percentage of the correct reconstruction. Apart from this, the reconstruction algorithms will, uh, will store the reconstructed curves uh, in, in, in a separate directory for uh, a visualization purpose. So the benchmark is hosted on GitLab, and uh, this is available at the at the at this URL. So we have included 15 uh, publicly available algorithms. The algorithms range from Rust family published in late 90s to recent algorithms, uh, for example, Stretch Denoise or Peel, published in 2018. We have also included optimal transport uh, in, in, in the benchmark, but uh, uh, this method has been excluded from all, all our experiments uh, because uh, optimal transport serves a slightly different purpose in the sense uh, it generates simplified shapes uh, from the point clouds. So we have experimented with over 2500 point sets and uh, these data, data sets 
are being classified into different uh, uh, groups based on the uh, sources and the mode of generation. So the classic data consists of the points collected from various papers or projects. Uh, sometimes we had to use webplot digitizer tool to generate the point cloud where uh, it's, it's a tool where, which allows you to load uh, an image of, of a shape and then generate the point cloud uh, along its boundary. So we have uh, uh, we have contours extracted from uh, silhouettes of uh, binary images, where the binary images are taken from MPEG-7 or Edinburgh or uh, um, 1007, uh, uh, 1070 shape database, and uh, 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 we have also generated uh, we have generated the synthetic data. Uh, so synthetic data is generated through from the analytical uh, shapes, for example, bunny or uh, you know, non-manifold curves, or for uh, generating sharp corners, we use the uh, analytical representation. So there are uh, two uh, ways in which the ground truths are uh, represented in our benchmark. Uh, one is index list, which is a common representation where uh, uh, the file has set of vertices followed by vertex indices representing the edges. So, so quite uh, common in, in 3D representation, you can find OIFA format, which uses the same, uh, same uh, kind of representation. Then we have also used ordered vertices where uh, each consecutive vertices consecutive vertices uh, represent an edge, uh, a consecutive edge. We have also provided an interactive tool to generate the ground truth, genera ground truth from the binary images. Uh, so that allows you to load the binary image and generate the point in either clockwise or anti-clockwise order. So that you get ordered set of vertices and that can be used as ground truth. So we have uh, uh, cat, you know grouped all these data that we have collected under various subdirectories uh, um, based on the experiments where uh, these data can be used. So you know there are data for manifold experiments or data for sharp corner uh, reconstruction experiments, non-manifold experiments, the data. For open curves and multiple curves. So under multiple curves, we have data that comes from multiply connected domain as well as uh, you know disconnected components. We have provided a sampling tool to generate epsilon sampling from Bezier curves. So it first densely uh, samples the Bezier curves and estimate the normals at each sample point. Uh, once the normals are available. Uh, to construct maximal empty disk for each sample point where the the center of the maximal empty disk lies along the uh, normal line. Once uh, the maximal empty disk for all the sample points are constructed, the center points of MEDs are approx uh, roughly approximate the medial axis of the shape. Local feature size of each sample can then be estimated by taking the nearest point from the set of center points of maximal empty disk. And uh, for uh, generating the epsilon sampling, the algorithm starts from an arbitrary sample SI and iterate over all the successive samples along the curve um, as long as this condition, that is SI, SJ, the distance of SI, SJ by local feature size of SI is less than uh, epsilon. And uh, the last valid point that satisfies this condition is taken as the next sample in the epsilon uh, sample, uh, epsilon sample data. And then this process is repeated until all the points are processed. For the binary images, 
we have a tool that extracts the object contour. So this is ex extracted by comparing the neighbor pixels for its uh, color values. And uh, the contours extracted uh, can be uh, sampled at different rates uh, to get, uh, you know, uh, dense point sets or uh, sparse uh, point sets. To measure how well the reconstructed curve C prime approximates the original curve C, we compute the distance between the closest points between the curves. Essentially, we uh, two shortest distance maps are computed, one from uh, C to uh, C prime, and another from C prime to uh, C. So once these shortest map shortest distance maps are available, uh, we take the maximum distances from both the uh, bo bo from both the sets, and uh, uh, take the maximum uh, of these maximum uh, distances, and uh, uh, that that constitutes your Hausdorff uh, distance. And root mean square value uh, is computed using this uh, the same set of distances. So uh, the driver program can be run with various arguments and options. Um, for each experiment, we have created a test script, which are uh, basically shell scripts that combines the list of algorithms and data used for a specific uh, experiments. Currently, we have provided nine uh, test scripts for uh, different experiments, uh, such as noise experiments, experiment, and outlier experiments. Or manifold, sharp feature, etc., etc. If uh, someone wants to uh, test their algorithm, they can do so by downloading uh, their resources into the benchmark, compile it, and generate the binary, and link the binary to the benchmark driver through the make file, which is provided under the benchmark, and then also include the algorithm name uh, in the benchmark driver uh, under the list of algorithms. We believe that uh, uh, the benchmark that we set up to be really useful for researchers and practitioners from various fields, especially when someone wants to choose a particular curve reconstruction uh, method for a specific task, um, they can use the benchmark uh, for uh, checking it, checking the suitability of, of a particular reconstruction technique. So on that note, I will now hand over the session to Amal. Good afternoon all. I am Amal Dev Parakat and I will present the last part of our star. In this part, I will talk about how to reconstruct various features, especially how to reconstruct from noisy samples and how to capture different features like sharp corners and self intersections. Later on, I will discuss the relationship between curve reconstruction and the traveling salesman problem. Furthermore, I will review the evaluation of our benchmark and summarize our findings. Finally, I will talk about future works. Until now, we talked about reconstructing from a given set of points sampled from a smooth curve. So what happens if the input is contaminated with noise? That means, instead of having a smooth sampling, what if our samples are relocated and have a large number of unwanted points around them? This noise is a significant problem in the context of 3D reconstruction. And in 3D reconstruction, this kind of noise comes if the sensor has some calibration issues or surrounded by some noisy particles. In the case of 2D points, this kind of noisy samples will come if we try to manipulate a sketch drawn in multi-stroke style. Though this is a crucial application, the algorithm that we discussed won't be enough and we might end up with some weird result as shown in this figure. So our question is about how to deal with this noise or in other words how to reconstruct non-noisy curves from such a 
noisy input. The first algorithm in this direction is by Li and he used a technique called moving least squares in which he iteratively projects points on a curve fitting their local neighborhood by distance weighted regression. Later on, the resulting thinned point set is locally approximated by a line inside a constant sized neighborhood. The weighting function for the moving least squares projection considers points only inside a globally constant radius which could also include unwanted points. To overcome this issue, the connectivity is made using the Euclidean minimum spanning tree. Another method is to make use of the hidden point removal operator or otherwise called the HPR operator. So the base idea is to do a spherical flipping and then decide the direct visibility from a point based on the position of the points with respect to the convex hull. This will capture the outermost points in the noisy band and result in a simplified point set. Another way to deal with this noisy point set is to do a subsampling and then use some reconstruction on these subsampled points. So in this direction there are two works. The first method subsamples noisy point set with minimum density and these subsamples are further relocated. The points which do not have exactly two neighbors in a density size neighborhood are recursively eliminated multiple times to create an ordered version of these points. In another similar work, they resemble a thinned point set from noisy points. Later on, they apply the NNCrest algorithm on these thinned point set. They also proved the correctness of the algorithm on a probabilistic sampling which is impractical. Unfortunately, the paper has minimal results and is presented with a focus on the theoretical perspective. Another work in this direction is by Wang et al. They initially constructs a quadri on the samples to identify the inner and outer boundaries of the noise samples. Later on, using the Voronoi diagram, the skeleton between these inner and outer boundaries is extracted. Furthermore, the skeleton is pruned to create a good approximation of the underlying curve. Unfortunately, this method requires careful tuning of several parameters and also it does not handle sparse samples. These algorithms that we explained so far for handling noisy samples are heavily parameter dependent. At the same time, most of the algorithms that we explained in the previous sections are non-parametric. So why can't we extend those non-parametric algorithms to handle noise? And that is exactly what Stefan did. They extended the parameter free HNN crust algorithm to handle noisy samples. In this extension, the conforming condition is extended by fitting in a circular arc to the local neighborhood if consisting of more than three points. Later on, these circular arcs are grown to larger neighborhoods until they cover these noisy clusters. One important property of this algorithm is the ability to capture sharp corners, which most other noise handling algorithms fail to detect due to the smoothening of the reconstructed result. Later on, this is further improved by introducing a method called stretch denoise. This algorithm improved the blending 
by modeling the recovered manifold connectivity separated from the high frequency residuals. They also shift the points in a restricted manner and also guarantees stochastic error bounds for the noisy samples. The next important feature is the sharp corner. So what exactly is the problem with the sharp corners? To know that we have to have a recap of the epsilon sampling. Given any point P on curve C there should be at least one sample in the epsilon LFS neighborhood of P. This definition of epsilon sampling is very nice. But what exactly is the problem? And why should we discuss this feature as a separate topic? So suppose there is a sharp corner. Unfortunately, the medial axis will then pierce through the corner. As it reaches the corner, the size of the LFS reduces and slowly becomes zero. But this epsilon sampling with infinite samples is not feasible. So we can say that epsilon sampling cannot be used to sample objects with sharp corners. So what is the solution for this? How can we sample sharp corners? And how can we reconstruct this? One easy solution is to develop a new sampling strategy. Since only epsilon sampling has the problem, why can't we come up with something new? But the epsilon sampling is too good to replace. So instead of coming up with a new sampling strategy, why can't we modify this epsilon sampling? to handle sharp corners and this is what they and Wenger thought about and presented in their paper. What exactly did they do? We can say that there will be two tangential circles associated with any point on the curve. Based on this they modified the epsilon sampling so that any sample P on the curve C must have a sample point within epsilon less than 1 times the radius of the largest circle associated with P. Later on they modify the nearest neighbor strategy to handle sharp corners by taking the angle ratio and degree into consideration. They also extended this algorithm by carefully structuring it to provide a theoretical guarantee. Another method introduced to reconstruct sharp corners came up with their own sampling strategy instead of modifying the epsilon sampling. They proposed a sampling condition relying on the correct reconstruction edges for a smooth curve and later relaxing it at corner points to generate a weak sampling around it. And after reconstruction, they explore these kind of potential corner edges and merge them with the smooth edges to get the final reconstructed result with sharp corners. The next important property is self intersection. Given a curve with vertices having a degree of more than 2, how can we capture them? This case occurs when we try to manipulate sketches or when we are working on point sets that are generated from images. One of the important works that can handle this kind of self intersection is the optimal transport based algorithm. In their algorithm, they formulate and solves the curve reconstruction problem as an optimal transport problem. Starting from the initial Delaunay triangulation, they generate a coerced mesh in a greedy fashion with the objective of minimizing the total cost. The vertices of this coerced mesh are intelligently relocated, which indeed helps it to withstand noise and outliers. But the problem is that the final result will be a simplified shape 
and since they are not keeping any degree or manifold constraints, their result can have self-intersections. Another algorithm that can handle this kind of self-intersections is Peel. And they do the reconstruction in two steps. Initially, they will do a reconstruction with degree constraints and then search for potential self-intersections based on the wandering neighborhood around the vertices with degree 1. So, are these the only algorithms that can handle self-intersection? The answer is no. Some algorithms do not impose degree constraints on the final result, which sometimes will result in vertices with a degree of more than 2. And the examples include crust and NN crust. These are the main features that are important for curve reconstruction. Now we will check whether the famous traveling salesman problem has something to do with the curve reconstruction. I believe all of you already knows about the traveling salesman problem. The idea is that we are given a few cities. A salesman wants to sell his products in all these cities while minimizing the overall travel cost. What we are interested in is to find out whether it is related to curve reconstruction. One of the primary works in the direction is by Giesen. And what he did is that he showed an existence guarantee. That means if the curve is densely sampled, he proved that using a Euclidean traveling salesman problem, we can reconstruct the curve. Though he proposed two algorithms for doing this, he did not show any results. Later on, Altos et al. showed that it also works for non-uniform sampling. Also, he proved that under epsilon sampling, the Euclidean traveling salesman problem terminates in polynomial time. Unfortunately, the bound on the epsilon is too small and also have a restriction on the angles. This traveling salesman problem is NP hard and hence is time consuming. Though there are a few faster approximation algorithms, the visual quality of their result. Another notable thing in this direction is the proposal of Oruk. And what he did is he proposed a minimum volume polyhedra for surface reconstruction. But later on, Boisnot showed with a simple example that this minimum is not always visually pleasing. So this relation is still quite dubious. And maybe we have to wait until someone comes with a polynomial solution to verify the usage of traveling salesman problem for generalized curve reconstruction. That is all. Now we will talk about the evaluation of the benchmark. We did different experiments and the first one is about the performance of algorithms under varying sampling densities. As the sampling becomes sparse, many algorithms resulted in a significant error. Next experiment is to find out how good different algorithm performs under the presence of noise. For evaluation, we introduced noise based on the bounding box diagonal LFS and epsilon sampling plus LFS. Due to various input features, specialized algorithms like fit connect and stretch denoise did not work well under bounding box diagonal. Whereas Almost all the algorithms worked well under the noise induced based on LFS and epsilon sampling plus LFS. The subsequent evaluation is based on how good various algorithms perform under the presence of outlier points. Though specialized noise handling algorithms gave a comparatively bad output, almost all the other algorithms performed equally well. We also compared the running time and found out 
that the simple DNA based algorithms gave a faster response. This is a sample output generated by various algorithms for a complicated input. We also conducted a few qualitative comparisons under which we evaluated various algorithms for simple, non-manifold, sharp corners, open and multiple curves. So to conclude, we made comparisons both quantitatively and qualitatively. Also, we evaluated the robustness of various algorithms under different conditions. To summarize from the evaluation, we found out that different algorithms work well for different features. So depending on the requirement, one can choose the best algorithm. And these are our suggestions. So is that all? Whether we thoroughly explored the curve reconstruction problem? The answer is again no. So there are a few future directions that might be interesting. The first one is about how to improve and simplify the sampling condition, especially for non-smooth and self-intersecting curves. Also, how can we reconstruct the curves from a hand-drawn sketch with varying stroke thickness and intensity? I believe all of you are aware of the recent developments in surface reconstruction using learning based methods. In a similar fashion, can we use learning to solve the generalized curve reconstruction problem? And instead of polygons, can we reconstruct smooth curves? Finally, can we reconstruct surfaces from a network of 3D curves? That is all. We hope this motivates you to look into this long-standing classical problem. Thank you for attending the presentation. You can access the benchmark from our website. And thank you.